So this has been a great week. I found something uh, I'm really excited about on Facebook Marketplace and I wanted to share it with you. I just picked these up in one go. Four antique outboard boaters. Now I want to get into them um, and see the condition of each one of them. But first I need somewhere to mount it. So I think the first project we need to do is build a stand to hold all those. Then we can get into them to see what kind of condition they are. The person who sold them to me said that uh, he bought them to put them on the wall. Uh, I do know one he tried to fix and it had no compression. Uh, the other two, I uh, did test them, but uh, let's wait till we get closer to them. Um, so, all the parts are there, so no one's really gone in there and taken stuff off. So, they might be uh, savable. So, we'll see how far we get into this video. But I am really excited about some, uh, uh, some of these motors. And it is coming springtime and summertime, so we need to get back on the lake. So this is the 1967 Evan Rood 3 horsepower motor that we saved last year. And if you want to see the entire build video on that, there's a playlist uh, and I'll link it down in the comment section. I didn't show in that build uh, the making of the stand. I think that came later. Uh, but this is similar to what uh, I think we're going to continue to build. But what we're going to do is instead of making this one motor width, we're going to make it to hold two motors at the same time. I made a mistake. This is more aesthetic reasons, but I want the feet on the inside of the stand just so that the, it's just a cleaner look. So structurally it doesn't really matter, but uh, I just messed up, so I'm going to put that on the inside. Here's a handy tip. I'm trying to screw this angled bracket into the, the stand, but when, when since I'm by myself, if I'm drilling like this, it's pushing down and creating a gap right here, and it's not staying in position. So a little trick that uh, I like to use is you get the item flush where you want it, and then you take a clamp, and you clamp down on the other end, and that way it doesn't give, uh, it doesn't slip because it's holding down here. So if you're ever in the need of a third hand, uh, try to find an alternative way to hold it uh, using clamps and then that way you can use both hands to, to while you're screwing in. After I finished the first one, I went ahead and made the second one because we're going to need two of them. And at this point you could be done with it and they are finished. But I wanted to uh, paint them for two reasons. One's going to be outside and this is untreated wood so it might last a little bit longer being painted. And two, I have too much of this paint just sitting around and we need to use some of this leftover paint. I don't even know where this is from but it's a nice gray color and it'll look good on the stands. Now that we got the stands built, let's take a deeper dive into the motors that we've got. So the first one we're going to look at is the Johnson 10 horsepower Seahorse. The model number is QD18H and I looked up the model number and found out it was made in 1957. You can see the uh, 
Might be a little too dark with the plate in there. Showed the model number. These are all in pretty rough shape, but I still love the shape of all these old boat motors. They don't make them like they used to. And I like the old Johnson logos here. And there's another neat one on the um, freeze plug. For a Johnson motor, let's just give it a pull to see what we've got. We're not going to go through it completely in this video. We will do that in the future videos, but let's just check it out. Oh yeah, it's locked up. It's, it stops there, so we'll need to get a deeper dive into this to see the condition of it, uh, but we'll get to it. So this next one we got is a Western Auto Supply. I think it, it has a Canadian make out of it. I think this was a, the company hired Wizard to sell them the motors because they were, I think they were selling a boat also. And uh, But I think these were made actually by Mercury in the end. Um, so let's give it a, tr a pull and then we'll give you a little tour around it. So that does have some compression to it so that's good. Um, and we'll get the compression test and again we'll do this in the future videos too. So I found the model plate on here but the first three letters and numbers are scratched off so that really tells the model of it. Um, so I haven't figured out exactly what it is. We just know it's a Western Auto Supply and I do have the serial number for it. And like we just showed it does have compression so that is a possibility. It, it's, somebody's painted it and uh, it's got a crack here can't get the gas tank open so it uh, looks like all the parts are there we just need to give it a fix and then here here's the other side of it and then you can see down in here let's see here can you see it right down back there is the uh, the nameplate but it's scratched up pretty good so the reason I'm attracted to a lot of these old antique uh, motors is because of the shape and this is of course one of them I never heard of the company before is Elgin which I think is uh, a Sears it has the model number of Sears numbers with the three digits and um, and then the rest of the model uh, but I think this was a Canadian brand because uh, this is a uh, Sears out of Canada and uh, so I think two of these whoever owned it before lived on the border of Canada because one of them was uh, made out of Minnesota or something like that I think maybe that was the the, the other one um, the Western Auto Supply um, but this has a really cool look now unfortunately the person I bought this from told me that he'd already tried to work on it and it has zero compression so I don't know what he's done inside here um, we'll just have to take it apart get in there and uh, see if it's fixable or not if not, I have another idea to reuse this. Um, instead of making it a wall hang, maybe we can make it to something else a little bit more usable. We'll, we'll get down later on down the road on another video. So for our last one, we've got our Game Fisher 7.5 horsepower. And this is a staple of the Sears brand. This particular model, I couldn't get an exact date, but it was in the late 80s, uh, 87, maybe 80, mid to late 80s, 85 to 87 is when they produced. Uh, this one and I'll give you a walk around here and also going back this Elgin uh, Had a date of around 1954 to 56 when it was produced So that's why uh, this is a little more older look design and this has a little bit more modern look to it So here you go. It's not in the best shape. It could be fixed I think it was near salt water because look at all this pitting um, on the paint. This might be a good project that we are going to uh, try to repaint it um, and try to bring it back to make it look good. Um, oh yeah, we didn't check the compression. Let's do that now. Here's the front. It looks like a lot of it's here. All the parts. Um, choke. It has somewhat of compression. It's a little tight but it does have compression so that's somewhat a good sign we just need to go through it and see what's going on so the big problem with this uh, if you can see down in there yeah there you go it is rusted so this is going to be another project we're going to have to see how rusted it is on the bottom and if it's possible to be salvaged if not it does have a access for an external tank here so we'll just have to see what the best way to do this. Um, but again, another good project. So thanks for coming along. We had some fun building some new uh, stands for our motors. 
I'm really excited about the motors that we do have. Uh, definitely want to get into them to see what we can uh, salvage and what we can do with some of them that we can't salvage, at least make them usable in other ways. And remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time.